Okay, this is a video on the tower itself, not so much the turbine. As you know, it's a test up turbine, modified, blades doubled in width. Uh, I'll measure it when I get it down. 4K generator, which is too large for it, unable to meet the minimum voltage of 50 volts unless you're at above 21 knots steady wind. So, overall power, I bought it from Ameriright Tower in Shelby, Ohio. <laughs> Uh, I bought five sections. This is with a triangular top plate that I made, quarter inch steel, uh, hot dip galvanized. That one, and also the two base plates down there. The other one is a 19 inch triangle, half inch steel plate. And then the base plate is a 25 by 25 steel plate, half inch galvanized. I purchased the three sections slash five sections the other two are right there that's for the future if I have to bring it up higher I didn't want to pay the exorbitant shipping cost these days uh, to have shipped two more pieces so I purchased them I probably will probably go at least 40 that's 30 feet to the plate and then 33 for the whole turbine so I'm above the nearby trees and there's nothing out in that area believe it or not if I should go up there and look around there's nothing there so what I did was I unbolted it there's four bolts I'll show you there so you have your top plate that you have to fabricate uh, you can buy it from them but theirs is slightly under a quarter but I did quarter inch steel uh, PVC tube as you see that's half inch that meets the requirements for three 10 gauge AC wires with the air gap inside it's come down that goes buries in the ground from the J box there over to the other side of the shed and then a J box coming into the shed where I have a temporary hooked up. So for the tower itself, like I said, Ameriright and Shelby, Ohio, uh, plug and play is basically together. They give you all the hardware, basically the bolts. So that they do not advise the, the quarter inch tilt plate. The guy even tells me, the engineer said it will fail. So I fabricated a half inch plate uh, triangle, basically. After I got the tower, I knew the pegs would fit in that triangle, and that's the size I picked. I didn't make it any too much oversized. I then welded half-inch hinges on there, made those just out of half-inch stock, welded them to the base plate, and then uh, put them to the triangle. Same thing on here, and you'll notice each one has a wedge. When I was welding the exterior, and if you do a lot of welding, you'll notice it pulls the steel back. Even though I did weld it, I should have put a small base weld on the inside at first and then ground it down, but I didn't. So I do have pulls on each of the four things. They basically go like that, which in a sense worked out well because as the plate comes down, it can move just a tad bit left and right. And when it does, it actually hits the outside of the uh, pieces of steel and it centers itself, So, which is good. And then you have to be careful when I did my welding to bring that that landed right there and that was my last piece for the flat bar so the flat bar is a one inch piece of flat bar it goes out there which the seven foot uh i-beam sits on there it's a four inch i-beam uh four inch i-beam rated for a few tons so i knew that wasn't going anywhere the hardware bought off amazon stainless steel they're up to 880 pounds or something the cable is 10,000 pounds rated this winch is the uh what is it? Uh, it's lifting 1,500 pounds carbon steel brake winch, which is very important. So the thing doesn't come winging down. You basically let it go, and it will stop basically where you have the tension on it. I have to actually push the power over to get tension on it. Uh, this is all one-inch bar stock things. This was about 270 something, I believe. I did in the other video uh, how much it was. So right there is. 270 something for that in the I-beam. Then you have the two J-bolts that go down in the concrete. Those go down 24 inches. This extra little pad back here ended up being my counterweight of 8, 1,200 pounds plus. And that's it. And then we have the PVC that comes down the tower. It's got the watertight fitting going to the J-box. That goes down 18 inches under the ground, then goes back to the other side of the shed. So for the tower, let me get this thing, see if I can push it over, get it to lean, <clears throat> and then let some tension go on my 
I gotta let some more tension go, I guess, on this for it to actually fall down or flip, whatever. So let me see if I can get it to lean enough. There it goes. It's putting some on there. It doesn't want to fall over that easy. So I'm gonna let even more cable out. This isn't easy doing a one-handed cameraman thing. So as you can see, I'm gonna get some cable out here. I want it to bird nest. See, I don't want it to bird nest on my spool. The whole two minutes of video, as you can see, I have a single pulley here, and I have a dual pulley up there. So you have four four runs of wire. It's very easy hand cranking down, of course. So all the weight is just pulling it. So I don't know if I can get it to. Let me try here. <clears throat> I'll try with my thing. This is normal. The Walt drill. It's 12 and a half amps. I think this one is. Uh, drill. So if you got a the Walt drill, you can definitely do it with this torque. So let's see if I can get that. That's going on. Yep. Beats me spinning it. So. Moves it along pretty good. All right. I was going to buy one of those electric uh, winches, but I already had purchased this and then figured out, hey, I'll just make my own little power tool here. So. That's working height. So anyway, back to this. I also did in a previous video for the tower. Uh, I silver soldered a here with a torch, two nuts on, and then I put an oversized 19 millimeter on here. So makes it much more easier. I use an impact wrench there. So it's strong enough to do that. Uh, back to the tower build. As you can see, make sure you don't have anything underneath the uh, plate because whatever's underneath the plate is going to get crushed like these weeds, right? So if they're in there, they're going to be crushed. So that's it for that. Uh, half inch plate, hot dip galvanized, 25 by 25 plate, hot dip galvanized. I did all the welding prior, so all the welds are, you know, cleaned and then galvanized. These were all placed. When I poured the concrete, I actually used the half inch plate as the template because there was no way in hell. I've seen too many guys on YouTube. <coughs> Having bolts and everything else didn't come up straight. Like some of these did not. Like this one, I think was the one, did not come up exactly straight. So that would have been a problem. When I taken the plate off, it was a little tough. But when I put the plate on there and let the concrete settle, took it off a week later. Uh, after a week, it's seven days and 70% of its strength. So, and 28 days to cure concrete. So, that's for that. This is a basically tight fit for when I welded these. I put this on here, and I wanted these to be pretty damn close i was thinking about welding these on here permanently but i said you know what i put solid stock in here this is welded so several layers of weld and that's the outer band of the welds there there's a solid uh, piece of stock in here so it's a solid beam it's not the tube or pipe so that's welded to there so it's one continuous piece up to here that's in there these are basically like i said tight fitting right there same with the back ones as you can see they're tight right against the tube so it's basically giving more support I guess one way or the other uh that's it for that the tower like I said it was uh oh uh, I'm gonna say just under it was twenty nine hundred dollars or something just under three thousand and basically that's for five pieces they can withstand for specs if you look on Marrow Wright towers 
40, if I got this correct, 40 feet of tower of this will freestand up to 117 mile an hour winds with no guide wires. And as you can see, I don't have much place for guide wires, but as you can see the angle between here and there, when a tower straight up, it's not as wide as that angle, but this acts as a guide wire. I have additionally put these on here for the future use because I can put guide wires from here and the other side down. You know, if I had to, if I go up 40 and 50, I can put the guide wires down here by the boxes and then I could put one guide wire over there just to give it some support. Uh, like I said, I found a quarter inch tilt, a quarter, quarter inch plate up here is probably fine. I can always slap another quarter inch plate or a half inch plate on top of that, make it really thick and sturdy for any future builds, which I'm looking at a helix uh, vertical because this right here from Tessa <laughs> sucks. And it's uh, the only way I'm going to make this work. I'm going to go online and get a uh, one kilowatt generator and it'll have less cogging. So it'll spin a lot easier. You know, it won't have that resistance. Hopefully I can get more speed out of it and get the RPM so I get the 50 volts. Anerometer, I just went and got a basic plumber, plumber's uh, galvanized flange, half inch tubing, half inch, stuck it out. The original was here when the blades were in farther, but unfortunately now I have to go out. And if I extend the cups on this for some reason, like four different cups I'm thinking, I'll just get another piece and go farther out with that to bring the anerometer out farther and then up. So that's it. Let me get my tape. I forgot to carry that with me. So that's pretty much for the tower build. Uh, oh, the concrete, somebody's probably wondering, that is a 28 by 28 inch. So it's just inside the 25, 28 by 28. And it goes down 72 inches. And then it hits a gravel pit, which is probably another six inches or so uh, that I put in there, it's blue stone. So that's 1.2 yards of concrete. Came out to like 12,800 and something uh, pounds of force for the earth for the counterweight. So. No matter what the pressure is put on there, the counterweight's gonna counter react that. It now has an additional 1200 pounds on its side, pushing down, I guess in one direction or the other. But that was basically to keep that tilt tower from pulling up. So that was that for the concrete. So now back to the original, and I think the original test up is 18 inches, I think. I now I forget the uh, measurements. I think it was, yeah, let's see. Yeah, 18 inches, I think it was 18. That's that blade right there. 18 or 19 and a half. So now we're looking at cross section of 32 from tip to tip. Tip to tip is 32. So basically took it from 19 and a half, almost doubled it. So I think, so anyway, that's it. This is 11 and a half. Very odd they didn't use even things. 11 and three quarters. Yeah, so that's the Turkish people for you, right? Nothing even. So anyway, that's it for that. Uh, I am going to put, I think, four cross members or three cross members. I may do it with the uh, wings that a friend of mine has to expand this thing with the uh, four vertical uh, airfoils and attach it to here and to the bottom and then put the blades out here. And I might even extend his out farther so it's even wider. I'll have to try that without the anerometer at first, but uh, somehow I'll have to get the anerometer maybe down low. I might have to turn that around and put it to the side. So suggestions are welcome. Anybody puts anything out. Uh, also, you can see the gap in there. That's not too cool with the uh, blade. Most of them are in, but that just happened to be flexed out. I guess just bent it wrong. The rest of them are all flat, which are nice. They're all down. Uh, this band out worked out well. Colin over in South Africa used nylon, but I use this aluminum band. It's half inch, it's cheap. It's six bucks for a, a strip of it. So that worked out real well so far. And it's been blown around the last few days. Nothing in my little aluminum well joints held. So that's good. So that's it for that. Uh, anything else on the tower build? I don't know. So that was it. The overall cost, what you're looking at from this thing right here, all the way to there and in the ground, it was 10,500 plus. So a few bucks here and there on little things I forgot to add in. So 
uh, that's with including the $75 anerometer, so and the pipe and fittings and all that stuff. So that's it for that. I did rate these. These things are, I think, 6,000 pound pull on these things, on these uh, shackles. So well overrated for what it needs, especially this. This is only rated for 880 pounds, dual pulley. So it's doing its job pulling it up. It doesn't look like it's stressed anywhere. It doesn't look like it's bent or anything. So it's worked out. Any other questions about the tower? Just ask me. Uh, did not do any kind of mathematical figuring on the angle that it's pulling at to see what kind of torque load it is actually right there from this weight. These things are 105 pounds a piece. <clears throat> so that's 315 right there. 315 plus this plate is probably another 20. So 235. Then this thing right here in its complete size plus these bands is 73.5 pounds by itself. So probably right at 74 pounds. Uh, yeah, give it 74 pounds. So 315, 20, say uh, 335, and then 75. So you're looking at 400 pounds, 405 pounds, roughly with everything and then I guess the weight of shackles and the cables pulling down. So that's about it for the uh, tower build. Uh, nothing else to add. Like I said, I'm going to uh, go for a 1K. This first step is going to be change this to a 1K generator to bring the cogging speed down lower and kicking speeds quicker. And then after I get that, if it doesn't do it in low winds, I'm going to add the arms and the wings to it. And then we'll go from there and see if the wings the arms with the blades on it will actually uh, make this thing spin and stay on, produce power. The Tessup Tower of Terror just doesn't end.